and welcome to this Pharos Designer Screencast. My name is Liz. As part of the Getting Started series, this tutorial will show an overview of designer software and will navigate you through the key areas of the program. The example show file that I'm using today is available from our website and you are most welcome to download it and study it at your leisure. Designer is navigated using tabs on the left hand side of the screen. The Setup tab is where we create our layout. Fixtures are added to the plan from our comprehensive library. Once completed, we use the layout to create simple programming groups and pixel matrices for video and effect pixel mapping. It is in the Program tab that we find our timelines. And here are some examples of simple sequences in this example show file. Built-in effects are selected from the preset directories and then dragged and dropped onto the timeline. In the Properties window, their various parameters are adjusted to create the desired look. Different effects and preset types have different parameters to edit. Sequences can then be viewed in Simulate. Please be aware that the rate of the screen capture may be making this screencast look a little jerky. Next, let's look at the trigger window. Pharos controllers are not only lighting playback devices, but full show control devices too. So in the trigger window, we can set up cues here for both hardware and automated software events as triggers for the system, and actions can be both for lighting sequences and show control commands. Triggers include real-time events and astronomical events that will happen automatically based on the clock and latitude and longitude settings, as well as hardware input triggers. Actions can naturally be to do with timeline manipulation and intensity, but also there are hardware output actions as well, being able to control other devices within the system. We can add conditions to all our triggers, adding logic to the triggering. And finally, a quick look at the other tabs. The patch tab. Selecting your controller and its universe, it is simply a case then of dragging and dropping fixtures as required for the patch, like so. Our controllers support local DMX and EDMX protocols. We also output DALI via modules, and this is the interface for that. For moving lights and fixtures with attributes other than intensity and RGB, which are programmed directly onto the timeline, in the Movers tab you would create presets for those attributes. And here you can see the typical attributes that might be controlled via presets. In the Media tab, we manage the QuickTime compatible video that we can import to play as an effect and the pixel matrices themselves. Here, for instance, you can see the representation of my facade, the water feature from the plan, and the representation of the bridge. The grayed area is the screen or the window onto which any of our video or effects will be mapped. Each square represents a single pixel and wherever those squares are populated with a fixture we will see the effect played over those pixels in playback. The network window is where we manage the controllers and the other hardware for each project. This includes properties necessary for show control, their output protocols, modules, and network settings. Finally, reports. We have a variety of spreadsheets available based on the data within the show file that can all be exported. So there we have it. Thank you for watching this designer overview. 
This Getting Started series covers each element of Designer in more detail, and I hope you will join me again to explore more about Designer in other screencasts. Thank you.